Lightning 5585, vehicle fire, reported to be an electric vehicle, Highway 104 near the county line. The fire service responds to over 200,000 vehicle fires annually, just in the U.S. alone. With the increased popularity of hybrid and electric vehicles, your chances of encountering a high voltage battery in a vehicle fire increase every day. In this short training video, we've teamed up with CAL FIRE, the NFPA, and Advanced Extrication to bring you best practice when responding to electric and hybrid vehicle fires. One important step when responding to an incident involving a hybrid or electric vehicle fire is to identify the vehicle this identification process starts with the reporting party, but it may be that we arrive at the incident and then have to identify the vehicle from there. This can be difficult when the vehicle is involved in fire. After the knockdown of the vehicle, which will be handled in the same way as a conventional vehicle, we can take the necessary steps to identify the vehicle. The formal identification for a hybrid or electric vehicle is simply the badging and branding on the outside of the vehicle. We can look on the inside of the vehicle for our informal identification, possibly in the engine compartment, trunk, luggage compartment, or just throughout the vehicle. More information on identifying high voltage vehicles can be found by visiting Advanced Extrication's website or the NFPA's EV Safety Training Program. Once we've identified that we're fighting fire at a hybrid or EV, we need to find the battery. Locating the battery is important for two reasons. First of all, we need to make sure that we're able to cool the battery if it's been exposed to heat. This will require locating the battery in the vehicle. We also want to identify the location of the battery so that we avoid it during our overhaul operations. We never want to cut or crush a high voltage battery or open it up to extinguish it. The personal protective equipment required for responding to a hybrid or electric vehicle fire remains the same as a conventional vehicle. SCBA and full structural PPE are adequate protection for responding to vehicle fires involving high voltage batteries. As we mentioned earlier, it's important to apply our water directly to the high voltage battery in order to effectively cool it. It's not always possible to get direct access to the battery. In most hybrid vehicles, we can lift up the luggage compartment or trunk area to apply water to the battery. If that area has been involved in fire, much of the battery coverings may be melted away, giving you better access. On vehicles with floor pan mounted batteries, we may need to lift the vehicle slightly in order to get water onto the floor pan battery. If conducting that technician level operation, be sure that your personnel are trained and equipped for the task and that care is taken to not interact with that battery during your lifting assignment. To evaluate if a battery has been exposed to heat or if it's involved in thermal runaway, we can simply observe the battery and listen to the battery. If we see smoke or steam coming off the battery or we hear any popping noises from the battery, this indicates that the battery is involved in a thermal event. We can also use our thermal imaging cameras to evaluate the battery's temperature. If the battery requires cooling, we simply use water to cool the battery. Directing your hose stream at the battery in one location that's been heated for a period of time and then moving on to an another location in the battery was found to be best practice rather than sweeping the battery with your hose stream. How the heat and fire spread through a battery varies dramatically. 
The variables are based on how the manufacturer has put the battery together, the charge of the battery, and where the battery was exposed to the heat. Water has been identified as the best extinguishing agent and cooling agent for lithium ion high voltage battery fires. Research and case studies have proven that it can take between 500 and 8,000 gallons of water. Later, we'll talk about actively cooling the battery and we'll cover best practice for application of water onto the high voltage battery. But keep in mind, suffocating agents such as foam and dry chemical are going to be ineffective in cooling your high voltage battery. In addition to cooling the battery with the application of water on the case, we can also effectively cool the battery by applying water inside the battery. This is only possible when a vent or other natural opening has occurred, like in the case of a collision ripping the battery partially open. If we have the opportunity to apply the water inside the battery, this is the most effective way to cool it. Keep in mind, at no point during the incident should you attempt to open up the battery to apply water to the inside. It's only conducted when we can do it through a vent or an opening created by the accident. Cooling the battery is very simple. A long, continuous stream of water applied to the case of the battery is the most effective way to reduce the temperature within the battery and limit thermal runaway. The application of our hose stream should be placed on an area of the battery where heat is determined. We can determine where the battery is heated with our thermal imaging camera or visually watching the battery for areas where smoke and steam are venting from the battery. That application of water should take place for an extended period of time and not be interrupted. Once we see visually that the battery has been cooled, either determined by no more smoke or steam coming off the battery or a clean reading with our thermal imaging camera, we can stop our cooling efforts. At this point, monitoring the battery again for smoke or steam coming from the battery or with our thermal imaging camera for 45 minutes before we release the vehicle to second responders is appropriate. If at any point during our waiting period we see any indication of heat buildup, water should be again applied to the battery. Typically when interacting with a hybrid or EV at a roadway incident, we're going to take action to shut down the high voltage and isolate it to the battery. We do this through the first responder cut loops or the high voltage disconnects within the vehicle. We also disconnect the 12 volt battery and often turn off the ignition to perform this operation. With high voltage vehicle firefighting, that operation remains the same. Although you may not be able to access some of these components due to the damage created by the fire. We're going to use any system that's still intact to perform that operation. But keep in mind, it may not be possible due to the fire damage to the vehicle. In most situations, the vehicle will have performed this operation on its own due to the high voltage relays in the battery. This means that we can operate as if we're at a conventional vehicle with the exception of interacting with those high voltage components. Let's take a look at our Tesla Model S training and research burn conducted in March of 2019. A 400,000 BTU torch was directed through an opening in the battery and over 3,000 degrees was applied directly on a module. The torch was left in place until fire had spread beyond the battery into the front trunk and wheel well of the vehicle. This took approximately 13 minutes. In this test, the heat applied resulted in thermal runaway to two modules. Firefighters were then directed to extinguish the fire and cool the battery. Knockdown was found to be a simple operation and the crew was directed to lift the vehicle in order to direct the hose streams at the floor pan battery. 
At this point, the battery was checked with a Scott thermal imaging camera. Cooling operations began and water was directed at the hottest area of the battery for nearly 10 minutes. The battery case was then checked again after the cooling operation had been stopped for five minutes. This time was given to allow any potential heat to transfer from the cells of the battery onto the battery case. The battery case was found to be over 200 degrees Fahrenheit and cooling operations began again. Cooling continued for another eight minutes until the battery was found to be sufficiently cooled. The vehicle was monitored for 45 minutes and no signs of thermal runaway were detected. The entire operation used approximately 4,000 gallons of water and the vehicle did not reignite at any point after the testing. Once the battery temperature has been reduced to approximately the outside ambient temperature and that temperature has been maintained without the application of water, again for 45 minutes, we're ready to release the vehicle to second responders, including law enforcement and tow. It's our responsibility to help educate our second responders on the proper storage and transport of the vehicle. The vehicle should be kept 50 feet away from any exposures wherever it's being stored. This is because there's always a chance of reignition days or hours after the incident. In addition, we can request that our second responders prop the vehicle up and position it in a way where any water that has gathered inside the battery drains out of one of the openings. In this short video, we covered the various operational considerations and tactics required to effectively and efficiently mitigate fires at vehicles equipped with high voltage batteries. The process for extinguishing a high voltage vehicle fire is no more challenging than that of a typical conventional vehicle. Remember to establish your water supply early and expect a longer commitment time. Cooling the battery directly with water is the appropriate extinguishing agent. We want to thank CAL FIRE, Tesla, and the NFPA for their support in the research development and the creation of this training video. I'm Brock Archer with Advanced Extrication. Take care and be safe.